Hello, this is Mark Wiltshire and thanks for choosing to listen to the Explore Finland radio show. This episode continues my collaboration with my friend Glenn, who is the Nordic tourist on YouTube and Instagram. For this episode, I'm really happy to be invited to visit the new Art and Culture Centre in Seinijoki, Kalevan Navetta. I was welcomed by Baivi Alaniska, a project coordinator at the Seinijoki City Cultural Services, and also by Eleni Teitti, an art educator and acting exhibition coordinator at the Kunsthalle Seinijoki. This episode ran pretty long, so I decided to split it into two parts. So in this, the first episode, we'll hear about the history of Kalevin Navetta, and then in the next episode, you'll hear an audio tour of the center with Paivi and Elena as our expert guides. So, let's sit down with Paivi and Elena and hear about the history of Kalevin Navetta. Paivi, Elena, thank you so much for inviting me and Satu here today for this tour. We thought it would be a good idea first to sit down and just hear a little bit about this building. What? Let's start with the big question. What is Kalevin Navetta? Um, well, if we, if we could uh, say something about the history, because mm. the house is over 100 years old, um, and Kalevin Navetta has its roots in the history of uh, Östermura country house, um, that is nowadays called Törnävän Kartano. And Östermura uh, was run by the Vasa Sherna family. Um, and Vasa Sherna is considered as one of the key figures of the history of Seinejoki, um, Seinejoki city and it, its development. And um, in 1890, Östermura was bankrupt and, and then the estate was purchased by its uh, biggest creditor. And that was um, actually insurance company Kaleva LTD. Ah, so this is now, we have a name. Yes. Kaleva insurance company and we're in Kaleva Navetta. Okay. Yes, yes, we're at the Kaleva barn. Uh, and then for a while Kaleva actually uh, considered continuing uh, the agricultural business that um, was really um, um, successful. successful, yeah. For a while uh, the insurance company uh, considered continuing the uh, Östermyras uh, agricultural business that was really uh, successful uh, and advanced at the time and um, they decided to um, construct this huge cow shed uh, in New Gaul in Mackey and this is the Kalevan Navetta. Uh, after a few years uh, the insurance company decided that uh, we're not going to uh, go into this agricultural business and, and then um, this state and the house was left unfinished. You said this word new, new curly, new curly Mackey. Yes. It's a strange looking word, new curly. Mm -hmm. Do, does it mean something? It does. It's a name. It was the name of the owner of this property. It was, oh. it was like a side farm or a side property to Östermura and the name was a Swedish name, Nygård. But the locals talked about Nygåli, of course, because it was a lot easier mm. in, in their mouths, mm. and that's why the name stuck. Interesting. Mm. Okay, good. I like, to, I like to hear these little little details about where these, where these things come from. Yeah. Sorry, Pavi. And nowadays we use uh, the name Itikammäki when we are referring to this area, but uh, the street, uh, our address is still New Gaul in Gato. Okay. It's, it's echoes of history. I suspect as we go on the tour, we're going to see more of these echoes of history yeah. throughout the building. Yeah. Uh, actually, the only time Kalevan Navetta functioned as a barn was in 1905 during um, this two day agricultural fair, and that was organized in this area. So uh, for a while we had this slogan that this is the barn that never had cows in it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we uh, read from uh, Pro Agria History that there was this agricultural fair and boom, there goes the slogan. <laughs> <laughs> Just two days two ruined, days ruined would, the slogan. Yeah, yeah, it did. It did. So basically this is the, uh, the first phase of the house. Uh, 
the 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 barn that never actually um hosted hosted the the um cows and then um in 1909, uh, Kalevan Navetta was sold to uh, Hugo Grönlund and uh, he constructed um, it um, to a, play, a base factory. So basically the factory uh, wove base and frieze, um, mainly woolly blankets. This, his, this whole area has a real history of textile production that's um, still, still going strong nowadays with Jokibin Pelava and Lennol and Lapu and Kankarit, just to name just to name yes. a couple. So it's it, it would have been quite quite normal back then for the for a factory to be here producing this uh, fabric. Yeah, yeah, and it was a, a relatively large company, large business at the time. Um, we've heard that it had um, up to one hundred and thirty five um, people working in okay. here. So, so it was no means um, a, a small mm. business. Uh, but unfortunately, then the um, the base factory was closed uh, uh, in late 1920s due to the um, depression, mm-hmm. and and that was that was the end of the second phase of okay. of the <laughs> house. Um, and then the third fl- third phase of of the building is the military district. That was in uh, was it in thirties? Yes, in the beginning of the thirties. Yeah. So the uh, senior military uh, district staff moves to this um, these old factory facilities, and they had a uh, warehouse warehouse in in Kalevan Navetta. Um, the the house has actually seen or lived through the wars as well um, and during the war times Kalevan Navetta served uh, the civic uh, civil guard as a as a storage place or as a, a headquarters or what was it how was it used actually both because mm. uh, also the administrative staff was in the not in the building itself yeah. but in the area yeah, okay. and actually there is another building still standing from that time the yellow wooden um, apartment building by Vasantia that you can see when arriving here by car Upseritalo or okay. the officers army, building, officers, army building. officers building yeah yeah but most of the uh, the buildings uh, that were built during the uh, military district's time in the area, they've been torn down. Mm-hmm. So basically, we still have the Karavan Navetta and then the, the uh, officer's um, house. And what is that building used for nowadays? Residential um, purposes. Right, so okay. okay. It, w- it was um, also renovated a few years ago. Okay. okay. Yeah. The army stayed here until the 90s, and even after that, the state, meaning the police station, apparently used the building as, as their warehouse. And also, there was an um, agricultural shop working <laughs> yeah. downstairs or functioning downstairs. They sold all kinds of things that farmers would need right, okay. for livestock and stuff. So that's another interesting aspect to the, mm-hmm. to the history. The, the, the agriculture thing came back again some, yeah. somehow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah that was a, a quite uh, short phase. But the army stayed here for a long time, for decades and decades. And that's mm. something that the locals, most people think of when they think of this building that it was a closed down community it was guarded because it, it like it was forbidden to go there without permission and uh, like a bit of a mysterious place we have also heard and there were many people living in this area decades ago because there were other other factories and and um, businesses here and employees and and we have heard of by this project was partly about 
um, interviewing and hearing the local people who used to live here or mm. work in the area, and we heard really really interesting stories about the mysterious side of the the army army barn, mm. and then on the other hand, the community spirit in the area. Mm, mm. I I also was reading a little bit of the history and and it said that this area was considered the center of Sainioki. Yeah. At yeah. that at that stage. We're we're not that far from the railway station. We're close there's there's river running running nearby and railway railway lines. It's just difficult to imagine this being the center when, you know, now it's the other side of the of the main sort of highway through the area and the center is where Lakod and Risti Church is. Yes, that has to do with the Alvarado Center because mm. it, the decision was made in the 50s to build the church and then after that the city hall and then the library and, and so forth. So the city center moved maybe one kilometer yes. mm. closer to the railway station. And mm. this area was a bit forgotten and, and left here as an industrial site pretty much. Mm. Also part of this project was was building this new sort of footbridge that, that kind of connects kind of another to really closely with the with the rest of the town um, at the far end from the car park is is where you can take the bridge and it takes you across the busy highway somewhere near to Arbese, which is a big landmark in most finnish most Finnish towns was that that was i guess a, an important part of the project. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that was something that the <clears throat> construction company uh, um, settled with the city uh, before they started building building the block and building the the new residential uh, buildings there. But that's a um, really important uh, um, bridge for us as well because we are in a really uh, tight fit here. We have the uh, railway going to Vasa and then to Kaskinen on the other side, so our parking space um, are quite limited. Uh, and understandably, we, we have to have those because of the, some of the visitors are coming uh, from, from um, not saying Yogi, but, mm. but from uh, other, other places. But for local people, uh, I think uh, walking or biking is the best way for for uh, visiting the house. Yeah, and also for those residents to sort of connect them with the with the, the town centre. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, most likely, yeah. And also, uh, Atria and Itika obviously is is a huge part of of this uh, the history of this area. I think it was 1950s when Atria decided to turn a sauna into a sausage factory. <laughs> <laughs> now, how, what, what, describe this sauna to me. Um, was it a, a public sauna or was it a building that belonged to one of the other buildings around here that they, that they took over? I think the, the later, the later uh, is our, our, uh, our idea and obviously we've read uh, through Atria's history a bit and this, this phrase uh, is, is from there turning the sauna into the sausage yeah. factory. But I think it refers or describes the situation that they really started small and then uh, during the decades it just grew massively. Now, nowadays the story is that every big successful company was started in someone's garage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is the Finnish version of that. You mm -hmm. know, what, of course it would start in a sauna. Why, yeah, wouldn't, why yeah. wouldn't it? And in the area had um, a lot of uh, different buildings. So it was... Um, uh, built um, bits by bits, uh, but by the 1960s um, the area was really cramped. So at Atria, or oh, it, it was Itika first, and then later on we know it's as, as Atria. So it kind of grew grew too big for this area, and then they decided to uh, start looking for um, new uh, factory premises outside the city and. We know that they ended up in Nurmo. Yeah, they have a huge production facilities, sort of mm. a few kilometers down the yeah. down the road. But then, 
they came back, so they now have their offices. Yeah, the headquarters. In, yeah, the there. headquarters in in this back in this area again. It well, it was built there not that long mm-hmm. ago. So. Yeah, yeah, a few years ago. Yeah. But after Atria moved uh, away from the area, um, obviously the the possibility of of redesigning the area um, came along, and and in early two thousand, um, the resi- redesigning of the city plan um, at Itikamäki uh, started, and and um, in the two thousand, I think it was was it eight or nine. Um, the construction company Beep bought uh, the premises, and then uh, in 2011, the city plan of the area was redesigned and then validated, and and that allowed the old industrial area to be used as residential buildings, office premises, and and um, then later on the the cultural center was also also. Um, yeah. In included in, in that uh, plan, and then the demolition of the old uh, factory area next to us um, started in 2012. So all of these old factory buildings were demolished. Yes. The navetta was preserved. It had to be. It had to be kept yes, yeah. as it is. And they built all these apartment blocks in a similar style yeah. to navetta. Yeah. Yeah, and and the whole uh, the block is uh, it's unique in saying it, okay because we have the the shared courtyard mm-hmm. and and they left the old factory pipe. Yeah, the chimney. Yeah, the chimney. chimney. Yeah. The chimney is there to to um, remind us about the history. So is that has, was that moved from the factory itself into this? No, I think that that's the original. Oh, that's, had, the, that's yeah. what it was. Okay. They had to um, um, make it a bit shorter. Okay. But oh, it. so there was a in the middle of that courtyard was a, a factory that had that mm. chimney, and they kind of took everything away and just left that as yeah. a as a monument. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, and okay. it's, it, it's lighted really, really nicely. Yeah. Um, and uh, well, Kalevan Navetta and then the officers, army officers' house. Uh, these are listed buildings, and they are preserved by the the um, the city plan. Um, so basically, it means that um, we can't uh, touch the exterior of the house. So the fas- uh, facade has mm-hmm. to be preserved, uh, including the old windows. Uh, the ceiling and doorways and those kinds of things and and then well, all the plans uh, they were uh, shown uh, to the museum authorities so that they uh, still honor the house and the spirit mm-hmm. and all the uh, construction materials had to be chosen so that they Obviously, they cannot be the same, but as similar as possible. Sure. Yeah. But Kalevan Navetta is not just a building. It's also kind of a, a project in a community. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the, the, the community that has kind of been built up as part of the project to, to renovate the building. Yeah. Well, Kalev- yeah, Kalevan Navetta is not a... Uh, legal company mm-hmm. uh, there is a property company Kalevan Navetta but that's owned uh, by Petri Pihlajaniemi who bought the house in 2018 and then renovated it uh, but before Petri bought the house before the renovation um, the process of, of restoring uh, or reclaiming the house uh, Kalevan Navetta it went on at least 10 to 15 years. So there was a um, 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 long uh, discussion about what to do with the house. And then um, the city, Kunsthalle, and also the um, um, University of Arts had these pop-up events here before, before the renovation. Um, we had music shows, exhibitions, 
So basically, we kind of tested out mm -hmm. uh, the the building uh, and obviously liked it a lot. So we have these um, positive experience is, but it just uh, took a while uh, for us to find a, an investor like Petri who likes uh, old buildings, has a soft spot <laughs> for those, <laughs> and also um, wants to sponsor arts and, and culture in this way. But I think the network was there, the people who were um, uh, running the project or or, um, or uh, lobbying for it, it was it was there long before um, us. Mm -hmm. And also the um, Petri bought the house in August 2018, and the renovation began um, quite soon after. Um, and we, I think, most of the tenants were already um, um, set before that. So you have you have all these sort of independent actors, yes. if you like, working within this working within this building, but somehow cooperating without being a cooperative, but still cooperating together for the the benefit of the whole of the whole place. Yeah, yeah, we got the uh, the the privilege of uh, both designing the house. Um, um, so it, it fits our needs, um, our individual needs, but also during the, the renovation process, what we also did was trying to fit those needs together uh, and uh, form some kind of a uh, concept or, <clears throat> or uh, routines, how we would um, run the house mm -hmm. together. And at that point, we decided on these um, <clears throat> collaborations that, for example, the shop is selling the tickets and the restaurant is in charge of uh, booking or, or uh, renting uh, the Hugo venue for yeah. some target groups. Yeah. So that's a, that's a great introduction to what Galavan Navetta is all about. And now you two are going to take us on a tour around the building um, so we can see some of these uh, different places. Yeah, definitely. Okay, lead on. Can I say a big thank you to Baidi and Elena for introducing us to the history of Gullivan Navetta. Wherever you're listening to this, check your podcast player for the link to the show notes, which would include links to the blog post about Gullivan Navetta, the video and photos from the day. It also includes any Finnish words that came up during the podcast and any other useful information. My YouTube channel, Explore Finland Radio Show, will have a version of the audio tour with photos. Glenn's YouTube channel, A Nordic Tourist, will have his familiar vlog style video from our visit. If you want to connect with me, I'm most active on Facebook, Explore Finland Radio Show, and on Instagram, at Mark Wiltshire, or on my website, explorefinlandpodcast.com. If you enjoy the show and you want to show your support, Please take a minute to share this episode. You can spread the word to your friends on your social network of choice. Let them know about the show. Invite them to explore Finland with us. Also, if there's a subject you want me to cover in a future episode, contact me via the website or social media. I'd be happy to hear from you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.